Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. My name is Hannah and this is a podcast all about crochet, a little bit of knitting and sewing and generally living the yarniest life possible in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I live. If you are looking for me on the interwebs, the best place to find me is on Instagram or Facebook. I am The Cozy Cottage Crochet. On Ravelry, I am The Cozy Cottage. And there's a face, not a Facebook group, <laughs> there's a Ravelry group for this podcast which you will find a link to directly in the drop down below. So go check that out. There's links to everything. If you have any questions, inquiries, comments, concerns, anything you need to know about the podcast specifically, please send me an email. That is the best way to, for me to make sure that I get your message and can respond. My email address is thecozycottagecrochet at gmail.com. You guys, I do not even know where to begin. I have so much crochet to talk about. So much crochet. I have a ton of finished objects. I have lots of works in progress, some of which you haven't seen in months. And also I have a tiny bit of knitting and a large amount of sewing. <laughs> and I made some stitch markers and I have some designs. It's all crazy. So we need to jump right in. But first, I just want to remind you all that we have a crochet along going on right now. It is the nerd along. And there are fantastic prizes that will be had. So you need to join in. You have plenty of time. You have until Thanksgiving, which is November 22nd. So US Thanksgiving, I think it's November 22nd. It's the Thursday that week to post your finished objects in the finished objects thread anything that you are nerdy about as long as you can justify it you are able to post it in the thread if you make my falling ivy shawl pattern you can post it twice in the finished objects thread so that will give you two entries and if you make anything out of sheep happens yarn which is the yarn that i designed that pattern with you can have an extra entry as well so you could have a maximum of three entries for one project if you make that project out of Sheep Happens Yarn. And there will be a special prize drawing just for the people who use Sheep Happens Yarn because I love that yarn. It's fabulous. I, and I love Leah. <laughs> I know you're watching, Leah. Hi. <laughs> you are fabulous and you keep doing what you do because I love your yarn. And I have another design that will be, it's in my brain, which I'll tell you about in a minute. I haven't started it yet. I haven't even wound up the yarn, but I'm going to use her yarn for that as well. Okay. Oh, I should say, also, what am I wearing? I haven't worn this in quite some time, um, and I was rearranging all of my finished projects. I have like a little cube box for shawls and hats, and then I have a cube box for cardigans. And this one, I pulled out, and I, like I didn't forget about it, but I haven't thought about it in a little while. This is the One Day More Shawlette by Quaylen Stark. He is basically crochet famous now. He's designing for Red Heart. <laughs> and very fancy but this is a pattern that he has for sale and I love it I especially love the shape of it because it looks like this so it's made in pieces and then seamed um, I don't want to give too much away but basically this construction means that it just stays <laughs> I don't have to pin it or do anything or mess with it it just stays around my neck with no problems and this blue yarn is Malabrigo and this multicolored rainbow yarn is Expression Fiber Arts, I believe in the colorway Koi Pond, but I'm not sure. I don't remember what the blue Malabrigo is called. Of all the things in my brain, color names are not one of them. <laughs> so we'll see how long this lasts. It's a little bit warm. I have the fan on overhead. If you hear any noises, my husband is working right over there um, and it's lunchtime, so he's eating. And I did not eat, I had some grapes. Hopefully that will tide me over to the end of this podcast. Oh, man, I don't even know where to begin. I have so much to show you. I guess I'm going to begin with the thing that I am most, most, most excited about. And I know some of you guys are very excited about this as well. You have not seen these finished, um, at least not blocked with their ends woven in, because I was waiting until closer to the release date. That's right. This is my Bellatrix shawl. This is a design that will be coming out on Halloween. It is being tech edited right now. So you will see this podcast on Saturday. And on Wednesday, you need to look for an announcement video on this channel. And I will tell you why in a second. So this yarn that I designed this with is Moon Tower Dye Works, who I adore. This is Desperado's Tagging a Train, that is the colorway, and this is Cats of Saturn. 
This is a short row, kind of like a bat wing shawl. It comes down to a point. Let me turn it around so you can see. These points, I have been wearing this, <laughs> so my I need to re-block it, I think. My points are a little curly. I have been wearing this quite a bit. Now, I will say, how do you wear this shawl? Let me show you. Because this version only takes two skeins of fingering weight yarn. I give you instructions in the pattern on how to make this bigger. If you don't want to increase your starting chain, then you are just going to need to go up in yarn weight, but of course it's not gonna lay the same way. So this works perfectly as a shawlette, and I just wrap it around like this, and then I kind of fluff this out a little bit, and that's how I wear it. The trick is, all you need, you don't need fancy shawl pins or anything, because you see these ends under here? All you need to do is safety pin from underneath, and it will stay. So that's how I wore it. I wore it all day at work last Sunday because it was like 70 degrees in Florida instead of 90. So obviously I can pull out the wool. I was wearing like a dress <laughs> that was above my knees with no sleeves because the wool heated me up quite a bit. But I had two safety pins from underneath so you couldn't see them through the top of the shawl, but it stayed all day. Perfectly fine. So this is Bellatrix. If you are uh, my testers for this have just been so fantastic. They have made amazing versions of this. Um, and if you are a tester, you can post this in the Nerd Along because Bellatrix is obviously from Harry Potter. So this is the fingering weight version, which I am utterly in love with and I am so excited. I don't think I've ever been this excited about a pattern release. <laughs> and I also made a worsted weight version, which is not going to fit in the screen. In solid colors, so you can see. I have to scoot back. So this is how big it is. Oh, it's blowing out the camera. <laughs> it's gigantic. There's no way you could wear it like this. I don't think. No, it'd be like wearing a blanket around your neck. So this one is more made to drape over your shoulders. Because it's a semicircle, it's probably just gonna stay. Although you could pin it with a shawl pin and it's almost like a poncho in worsted weight. So I love it, love it, love it. Oh, this is the wrong side that I'm showing you. <laughs> this is the right side. You can see right here that it's made with short rows all the way across, and this is where they join. Now, the reason that I made this out of the Moon Tower Dye Works yarn is because this is heavily speckled, and I cannot get over how beautiful it is, but if you have skeins of heavily speckled yarn that go together, use them in this pattern because it really hides the short rows. Like you can barely tell where they join <laughs> on the speckled yarn. You will need to block this, of course, if you make it to get the points to lay flat. As I said, I've been wearing this one so it's not quite as flat as it was. It needs a little soak in a pin out, but oh man. This, if I had kept going all the way around, I could have made a tr Christmas tree skirt out of it, but of course it's purple and pink, so. Am I gonna make a Christmas tree shirt out of <laughs> purple and pink? No. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you about this is there is a little semicircle in the middle that is made by making this half circle shawl. So I have not tried to fill this in. To me, it's like a cool design element. And I'm just like, if you're wearing it around your neck, no one's gonna be able to tell. And when I wore this one around my neck front ways as a bandana, it rolls up a little bit like this, and you can't tell that that semicircle is there. If you wanted to fill it in, I suppose you could just do some single crochets and half double crochets until there wasn't a little tiny circle anymore. But that's just how the short row shaping works. So, you guys, I don't even know how to express how excited I am about this pattern to you. This is my favorite thing that I have designed to date, and it's one of my favorite projects ever, I think, that I have ever made, and this, is going to be, now that I have shown it off to you, my couch shawl. So I like to keep a, a shawl on my couch. I sit like right over there on under a lamp when I crochet and my husband sits on this side of the couch and we watch movies or we'll watch TV or he'll play video games or whatever. And sometimes I get cold. So I like to have a shawl to wrap around like this and this is gonna be my couch shawl. I can't wait to wear it. So this pattern will be released on Wednesday, October 31st on Halloween. This is Halloween, this is Halloween. Yes, so you need to keep an eye out for the announcement video 
because there will be a coupon code in the announcement video for you to get a dollar off this pattern. This pattern will be $4.50, but if you use the coupon code, it will be $3.50. There is a photo tutorial included in the pattern on how to do short rows. So if you have never completed crochet short rows, I promise you it is not scary at all, at all. And you will be able to do it with no problem. Several of my testers had never done crochet short rows before they made this pattern had no problems at all. You can memorize the repeat. After you do like two of these wedges, you're not even gonna need the pattern, I don't think. And as I said, I have included instructions on how to make these wedges bigger. So this is the same number of stitches as this. So both of my samples are done in the same amount of stitches, just in different weights of yarn. So if you wanted to do a fingering weight version that was as big as this worsted weight version, you totally could. You're just gonna need way more yarn. <laughs> And I've included how to expand the wedges. You just have to keep going further than the pattern says. But I've included instructions on that too. So I hope you're excited because I am the most excited that I've ever been. And I cannot contain myself and I'm gonna be wearing this all winter. In fact, I may wear it on Halloween because it looks like bat wings to me. And I'm gonna set that over there. So keep an eye out on Wednesday for the announcement video. It'll be really short, like a minute or two but it will have a coupon code so that you can get a dollar off because you guys have supported me so much that I just want to say thank you and happy Halloween to anyone who would like to purchase this pattern. And um, if, if you can purchase it on Halloween and get it finished by November 22nd, you can absolutely enter it into the Nerd Along because this is named after Bellatrix, Less Strange from Harry Potter. Also exciting, is this will be part of a pattern collection that will eventually have three shawls in it. I have an idea for the second one in my head right now. I just need to think about it. This Bellatrix shawl took a lot of thinking. The patterns will seem simple when you make it, but it took months for me to design because I had, I kept starting it and pulling it out and starting it and pulling it out because I wanted it to look a very specific way with these points. And I just couldn't wrap my head around how to do that. So the simpler a pattern is, probably the harder it was to write <laughs> because sometimes it just doesn't go that way. So this one took me months to design. I have an idea for the second one, which will be called Serious. No, it'll be called, it might be called Serious. I haven't decided if it's gonna be called Serious or Lucius. So we're gonna have Bellatrix, potentially Serious or Lucius. I haven't decided, it depends on what the yarn wants to be called. And the third shawl in the collection will be called Severus. So there will be three shawls, all using short row shaping in different ways, eventually. I'm hoping by mid next year, but we'll see. Um, and then once all three patterns are released, I'll put them together in an ebook so that if somebody wants to buy all three at once, they can do that. So this is Bellatrix. I am thrilled. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm thrilled. So keep an eye out for the announcement video you will get a coupon code. And that is just my way of saying thank you, thank you for how much you have supported me in this shawl. I know lots of you guys are really, really excited about this pattern, and so am I. So those are my finished objects, number one and two. Um, I finished them a, a few, quite a few weeks ago, but they have been waiting on hold <laughs> until the pattern was almost ready to be released for you to see the final end product. But that's not all, I have other finished objects, you guys. And, one of them is gigantic. Let me show you. You will know what it is if you recognize this bag. This is a beautiful Halloween bag given to me by my lovely friend Barb. And it is, of course, my Blurred Lines sweater, which is a lovely pattern by Deanne of Addie Day Designs. I used Loops and Threads Wool Like for this pattern. I bought four balls, so two in the blue and two in, let's see, this is Teal Lake, this blue, and this gray is just called Cool Gray. So I bought two balls of each, and I've used more of the gray than of the blue. The gray was my main color, but I still have like half a ball left, and probably two thirds a ball. So this sweater in yarn cost about $12. Yes, you, I love, loops and threads will like.
it's finished last time I just had a sleeve left I was like right here and I had to do a whole sleeve now I will tell you these sleeves take forever because they're fingering weight <laughs> it's fingering weight yarn so you're you're not gonna get through a whole sleeve in a day unless you spend like all day doing it so this is the sweater it has short row shaping on the back in two places and that's what raises the collar up on the back a little bit it has this striping effect and then it has striping down at the bottom we've got ribbing this is the sleeve so the sleeve matches the striping on the actual pattern like perfectly look how close that is and then of course the best part is a thumb hole i'm gonna put this on um, i have woven in all of my ends i have washed this I have blocked it very slightly. I blocked just the bottom part. And I, in fact, I may have blocked it too lightly <laughs> because I wanted to get about an extra inch out of the bottom just to feel a little more comfortable wearing it. Let me stand up. So as you can see, my shirt's all rolled up underneath, <laughs> but this is my hip right here. This is my hip bone. So it goes down. This is my pocket of my shorts. So it goes down quite quite far this is what the back looks like you can see on this side is where this the rounds start for the striping you can also see it on the inside of the arm hopefully you can see it obviously we have thumb holes we have up here and then the striping on the back starts here behind the shoulder I'm not gonna keep this on too long because it's hot it's really hot today. I almost wish I had yesterday off, <laughs> which was Thursday, to record a podcast because it was so much cooler. But, ooh, man, it is steamy today. I worked out this morning. I looked like a tomato afterwards. I did really not make any modifications to this pattern. The only modifications I made were I ripped out, I worked the sleeve to the amount of inches that she says to for my size, but it was too long for apparently my arms are short. <laughs> So I'm not, I'm not a proportional person. So I had to rip out like 15 rows on the first sleeve. And then I started the ribbing and she has you go down a hook size for the ribbing, but I crochet so tightly. I just did not want, I didn't want that. So I used the same hook as I did for the sleeve and the body to do the ribbing on the hands. And I'm really happy about that because I have some room here and it's not too tight. So I didn't have any problems with the thumb holes. I did rip out, I ripped out one of them, just a couple of rows twice to position it. And this one, I didn't have any problems with. It worked absolutely perfectly. So I love this sweater. I cannot wait. I cannot wait until it is cool enough for me to wear it, like actually wear it instead of over something as a jacket. It is so comfortable. And I did wanna say what you're seeing right now is actually the wrong side. So she has you work it like inside, inside out. So what would normally be the right side becomes the wrong side on the inside. So this would normally be the right side, but it's on the inside. Because of the way that it's worked in a spiral, I think it looks really, really nice from the other side and I really, really like it. I like this pattern so much that I am going to buy one of you a copy of this because I think that you need to make this pattern. Now, we're gonna have a giveaway separately from this at the end of this podcast, so stick around for that. This, you, if you want to win a copy of the Blurred Line Sweater Pattern, go to my Ravelry group. There will be a thread posted, and I want to know, have you ever made a sweater? Have you ever made a fingering weight sweater? And why do you wanna make this? Because I wanna buy it for someone who's serious. Please don't enter this giveaway if you are not gonna make the sweater. If you are serious about making this sweater, I'm gonna pick someone. <laughs> Well, random number generator from the Ravelry comments on that thread and, and buy, gift you this pattern because it is so well written. I had zero questions. Um, I got a little bit confused about the short rows at the beginning, but I had Deanne's voice in my head going, just trust the pattern, it'll work out. And so I kept going, I plowed through. I think I got one stitch off in my count. Um, and so I just fudged it and added one stitch on the next row. That was the only time and it totally worked. And once you split for the sleeves, it goes much, much faster. I 100% recommend this pattern to anyone who wants to make a fingering weight sweater. It is so detailed, it is so clear, it fits. This is the best fitting thing I think I have ever made. Like look, look how well it fits. 
it fits everywhere perfectly. And the sleeves are the right length. I don't know. I, I sound like I'm gushing. I am thrilled with this sweater. It has taken me months, <laughs> literally months to complete, which, I mean, what are you gonna do? I didn't particularly want to, I didn't have like the energy to work on it over the summer, but now that the winter's coming, I would love for one of you guys to make this sweater and then post a project page. I will be making her new sweater pattern, the add-along that just came out sometime soon. <laughs> I'm trying to clear some of my whips out and I have a lot of massive projects on the go. Um, and I, I also cannot decide what yarn I want to make it out of. I'm, I honestly may make it out of loops and threads held double because that's a, for a DK weight. I don't know yet. So if you want to win this sweater pattern, go to the Ravelry group. The link is down below. There will be a prompt. Answer it and I will pick a random number generator by the next podcast. And if you are on a budget and you don't know what yarn to use and you're in America or you're in a place where there is a Michaels craft store, go and get some loops and threads. We'll like because it's like three bucks a ball. You can have a whole sweater. At least I had a whole sweater and I made the medium size for $12. Not even in counting coupons, okay? So I'm gonna take this off because it's a little warm. And everybody, wave goodbye to the beautiful blurred line sweater. It's all rolled up. Mm, happiness. Okay, that's not all. There's more. Just you wait. I don't even know what to talk about next. <laughs> I have two more finished projects. Let me just grab this one because it's closest. This is living in a watermelon bag, which is the first project bag that I ever sewed <laughs> for myself. And as you can tell, hopefully, it has a crochet sock pin on it, Socktober, so you know what's living in here. A pair of crochet socks, and they are finished, finished, finished. And I have worn them, and so I have a full review <laughs> to tell you about. So let me just tell you quickly about the yarn first, which I dropped on the floor. This is yarn that I got in Edinburgh when I was there. This is Lang, Jawul, Yavul, I don't know how to say it. Um, I do not know what the colorways are because I'm sure it says somewhere. I think it's a number. So um, I bought two of each of these. So I had 100 grams of the gray and 100 grams of this tealy blue. This is all I used of the 50 gram ball for the blue. So I still have an entirely, an entire another one of these. I used all of the gray so I used 50 grams of the gray plus a little bit, and I'll show you how much I used. The pattern that I used is the Baseline Socks, which is also a pattern by Deanne of Addy Day Designs. This might as well be called the Addy Day Designs podcast <laughs> because I love her pattern so much. So I've had this pattern for quite some time. You guys know, because I've talked about it, I think on the podcast before, that I am very skeptical about crochet socks. Um, I have knitted four pairs of socks and I have another pair on the needles that I haven't touched in a couple of weeks <laughs> because I've been making crochet socks. But I've been very skeptical of them um, just from most things that I've heard. Like people have a really hard time getting them to fit. They have gauge problems. They don't stretch over the foot. They don't like how it feels under their feet. On and on and on. So I've been very skeptical that you can crochet socks that are great. However, there is a crochet along currently going on called Sock, Sock Along 2018, and it's hosted, it's like a, a conglomerate, basically. So we have the Chatter Thread and Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast, her group. I don't know if you guys heard that, but something just fell down in the kitchen. <laughs> and no one's in there, no one's in the kitchen, so we have a ghost. This is Halloween, this is Halloween. Anyways, uh, what was I even saying? So the chatter thread for this is in the Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast group on Ravelry. The finished objects thread is in Catherine from Crafternoon Treats, her podcast group on Ravelry. And then the lovely Faye from the Crochet Circle podcast has put out blog posts. There's been all kinds of blog posts and information and it's basically everyone's getting together to make crochet socks and support each other. So if you have questions, if you have problems, if you have gauge issues, so I'm like, okay, if I'm gonna make them, I might as well make them now when I can have support and ask people questions and everyone's doing it together and if they turn out to be a complete fail, it's okay. It's just yarn, you guys. It's just yarn. I can always frog it. 
So a lot of people start with a very basic sock pattern, like either cuff down or toe up and just like single crochet around, etc. I know a lot of people have started with Ron Strong's patterns um, from, he has several books out. I have heard, I wanted to make sure that I had a great experience. So I picked the baseline socks pattern because I know that Deanne writes amazing patterns and I did not want to get frustrated halfway through this sock and quit because of the pattern, because there's the errata that I didn't find, because it doesn't fit me, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to have a good experience so that even if the sock itself didn't fit at the end, I could give you a positive <laughs> report. And let me tell you, if you wanna make a crochet sock, this pattern is awesome. You should make it. It is so clearly written, I did not have a single question anywhere through it. There was one row, I had to frog one row one time in the entire sock, that's all I pulled out. And it's because I just glanced at the instructions and I thought in my head that I knew what she was talking about. No, the second time I read it, I was like, oh, obviously. <laughs> then I didn't, I wasn't following that at all. There's all kinds of sizes in this pattern. There's like six sizes of sock that you can make. Um, and let me show you what I made. And I'll talk about the socks. I have a completed pair. So I made the shorty version, which there's no way I'm gonna be able to get this on my foot and then show you. <laughs> so this is what it looks like, basically. So you have flat stitches on the bottom. So it's toe up, so you start from here. You have flat stitches on the bottom, and then on the front, you have this alternating kind of really squishy ribby pattern. And then you do the heel, which is worked short, short row heel. And then you join back in the round, basically, to do the cuff, which you can see that you have a little bit of the ribbing, and then you have just the solid color. So here is what it looks like sideways. So crochet, crochet does not stretch this way. A little as far, like that barely stretches, right? So crochet stretches this way, knitting stretches this way, which is why most people have always made knit socks because they're easy to get on your foot and people don't make crochet socks because they're not easy to get on your foot. I had a little bit of problem with gauge because uh, I looked at the pattern and I, was, I think I was supposed to have 26 stitches. Let's see, yeah, 26 stitches to four inches. Uh, using a certain size hook and I looked at it and I immediately knew that I was not gonna get gauge with that hook so I went down it was a four millimeter so I dropped to a 3.5 and swatched and I was still like way over or way way under I was under I didn't have enough stitches which is normally not my problem I crochet really tightly so I dropped again to a 3.25 and then I still was two, two and a half stitches off gauge. I probably should have dropped to a three millimeter, but I was kind of nervous because my row gauge was not great because I crochet so tightly, my rows are squashed usually. So I stuck with a 3.25 millimeter and I'm kind of glad that I did. Although maybe I'll go down for my next pair. So if you have too few stitches, per inch when you're doing a gauge swatch, your project is going to come out bigger. If you have more stitches per inch, it's gonna, no, right? If you have more stitches per inch, it's gonna be smaller than intended. And if you have less stitches per inch, it's going to be larger. So I was like, well, if it's a little tight, that's okay, because I'm a couple stitches off and it should be a little bit bigger. I made the third size for a foot circumference of eight and a half inches at the ball of your foot. I kind of have like flat, weird hobbit kind of feet in the sense that uh, my toes are really fat <laughs> and my ankle is really thin and my heel is kind of thin. So when I put these on, the toe doesn't quite, like my pinky toes, like down here. <laughs> but that's fine, that's on all socks for me. So I started toe up. Uh, the, my first sock I got to about here and then I had like a small meltdown about how it was never gonna fit me and I don't even know why I'm making crochet socks and this is just a, such a waste of time and I can't believe I'm doing this and it was clearly an emotional day. It had nothing to do with the pattern of the socks and I was like, you know what, it's just yarn. It's just yarn, I'm gonna keep going. So I went, I kept going, I finished the first sock. I will tell you my favorite thing about this sock is the heel. 
so easy to do. Like I had absolutely no questions and the heel took me like, I don't know, not that long at all. So I finished my first sock and I was able to get it on my foot without too much of a problem. It's a little tight, but with a little bit of wiggling, I got it on my foot. So then I was like, perfect. Now I know what I'm doing. I'll make the second sock. And I, I don't know if this is the second sock because they have been through the washing machine. Don't judge me. I can wash this yarn. <laughs> so I made the left sock and somehow it turned out a little bit smaller than my first sock. And I felt like I was crocheting looser, but apparently my gauge changed. I don't know, maybe I was stressed out or something. So this, I'm assuming this sock, one of these is a little bit smaller. So I have to make sure that I wear the smaller one on my left foot <laughs> because my right foot is a little bit bigger than my left foot. And I can guarantee you if I had made the tall version, I wouldn't have been able to get these over my heel because I kind of now have to be like stretching it from underneath to get it over. So look how much these stretch. That's a lot of stretch, right? I actually probably could have gone with a few, like maybe three or four less rows in the body before I started the increases for the gusset because I wore these two days so that I could give you a full review. I finished these this weekend, this past weekend. I wore them all day just in regular tennis shoes um, to see, I was assuming that they would stretch out a little bit and maybe the tightness would be okay. The right sock fits perfectly now and I don't have any problems. The left sock is still a little bit tight, tighter than I would like it to be, to be comfortable all day. And I don't know what I did on my left sock. I must've just been like really crocheting much too tightly. I think if I were going to make these again, which I will be making these again, after I make a few different pairs, that I would increase to the nine, is it nine inches? Yeah, so I made the eight and a half inch circumference size. I'm going, I would increase to the nine inch circumference. So I'd go up one size and then maybe do like three or four, maybe three rows less in the body. Because after I wore these all day, they were just a little bit loose in the heel. Like I could have done with a little bit less length because you remember your crochet socks, you want them to be shorter than your foot because crochet stretches this way and it's gonna stretch out. Then I wore these, I, they were comfortable. I didn't have any problems wearing them or feeling the bumps on the bottom of my foot. And I am very sensitive to stuff like that. When I first wore my knit socks, I didn't like them because I could feel the knit stitches. And it's almost like I had to break them in and like felt them a little bit and get them a little bit fuzzy so that I no longer felt the little knots. So these, I didn't have any problem wearing them all day in my shoes. And they were super fun to wear around the house because they're so cozy and squishy. I then wore them another day when I went for a run in the morning. So I only ran one mile in these. And I don't know, I'm thinking if I wanted to run in these, I would need to use a smaller hook because of right here across the ball of the foot, which is where I, put the most pressure when I'm running, right? Is it stretched out a little bit and it fit my foot perfectly, but there were like almost little holes in between the stitches, which is of course because crochet. So if my hook size were a little bit smaller, that would have reduced that and I don't think I would have had any problems. So maybe I'm just like slamming my feet into the ground, who knows? So overall, front view, sock view, I am really happy with these. Like. I, I expected to have a good time making them. I did not expect to be able to wear them. And even though they're a little tight and the left sock is <laughs> a little tighter than I would like it to be, I had a blast making these. And I would highly recommend the pattern to you if you're gonna make a first sock. These are great. And I'm gonna keep wearing these. Like I'm, It needs to be cooler here for me to wear them because my feet were hot. But as soon as it cools down, like these are gonna be some go-to socks, especially like in boots, I think. These will be really, really comfy. I didn't have any problems fitting these in my shoes, even with the thick fabric on the top of the foot because I was wearing lace-up shoes both times when I was running and then when I wore them all day. So I highly recommend this pattern. Deanne, your sock patterns are amazing. Uh, next time I will <laughs> work harder on my gauge and I think that I'll just go up a size so that I can fit my fat feet into them. <laughs> and then um, I'll follow the length measurement for the eight and a half size foot. So for my first pair of crochet socks, 
I expected to get on here and be like, they don't fit, and I had a great time making them, but it was a disaster, but it wasn't a disaster. And I love how they look, and I probably will be wearing them tonight while I'm crocheting on the couch, because these are like the best house socks ever. That is a giant finished object for me. Um, I don't, I meant to have this as a work in progress, but I haven't started it yet. I'm gonna make two more pairs of crochet socks and then pass judgment as a whole. <laughs> like, will I make them after I make three, once I've made three pairs. So the next pair that I'm going to make is the My Sweet Socks pattern, which is by Caroline of the Mind and Muse podcast and Clarissa Beth of the Crochet Cakes podcast. And let's see, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but you can see it, it's a plain sock and then it has like a cupcake detail around the edge. I don't know that I'm gonna do the cupcake detail, but I want to make the socks and I'm going to use this yarn. <gasps> Look how pretty this is. This was a beautiful skein of yarn that was gifted to me by Melody of the Melody Crochet Podcast and I've been hoarding it in my like stash waiting for a perfect project because it's blue and purple and speckled and she dyed this herself. Melody, I love this yarn. And I've been looking at it being like, hmm, I don't know what to make with it. And I put it back because I want it to be something great. Um, but I think this is gonna make such a beautiful pair of socks. So this will be my next pair of crochet socks because um, these are more of a, I don't wanna say plain, but they use the same stitch all the way around. So you're not gonna get that difference between the bottom and the top of the foot. And then after these are completed, I didn't bring the pattern over here, but I will be making the Segway socks, which is by Deanne from Addy Day Designs. So I'll be making three pairs total, and then I will pass judgment as a whole on whether I will keep making crochet socks or if I'll stick with knitting them or if I'll do both. So I don't know, I'm really happy with my first pair. Whew, my goodness, it's been 36 minutes I've been talking and I still have another finished object. <laughs> this is gonna be a long one. So this actually probably belongs in my design section, but it's finished, so it's a finished object. It has been living in this amazing butterfly bag, which is pink on the inside, um, and it has a pin on it. It says, equal opportunity yarn lover. This is a bag that Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast gave to me, and this is also one of her pins. Um, I have basically only her pins. <laughs> I have like a couple other pins on different bags, but every pin you're gonna see pretty much is from her, and she specializes in making pins for crocheters. So you should totally go check out her Etsy shop and get these pins. These little buttons are really cheap. They're like three bucks, three, four dollars for one and they're so well made. So they make me really happy. I have made a Christmas design and actually all I need to do is measure the gauge, which I hope I can do today. And then I will be getting it out to testers. So I would like it to come out at the beginning of December. This is going to be called the Pine Forest Cowl. I made it out of one ball of buttercream mohair brushed which is 80 percent acrylic 10 percent polyamide that's nylon in case you didn't know and 10 percent mohair in the colorway dark green which to me that's not really a dark green <laughs> but whatever how i design is i when i when i'm working on a pattern i grab a notebook and i stick it in my project bag and then i write everything down and if it doesn't work i cross it out and then just make a space and keep writing because I will not remember. So I have, you'll see two of these notebooks this time actually. It looks like a sewing pattern. And I picked this one because it has, it's all coats so I feel like it was appropriate for winter. My BFF for life, Caitlin. Hi Caitlin. She got me, it was a set of three for my birthday months ago and she was actually really upset because she thought they were sewing patterns. <laughs> but they were notebooks instead and i was really happy that they were notebooks because now i don't feel guilty about not making the patterns and i use them constantly so this is my this is my design etc that's how i wrote everything down uh that was my gauge swatch <laughs> i did it in giant worsted yarn and this is the finished object so oh it's upside down <laughs> This is filet crochet, because you're just doing double crochets and chain spaces. And this is what it looks like. So to me, I wanted it to be inspired by Christmas trees, but also subtle. So if you're not into Christmas bling all year round, you could wear this and be totally subtle 
and no one will know. It is long enough to wrap around your neck twice and fit perfectly as a cowl. You can actually make this shorter, like you can make it half size if you wanted to, if you'd only wanted it to wrap around your neck once. You could make it longer if you wanted it to wrap around your neck three times. You don't, it's made flat and then seamed, so you don't have to even make it into an infinity scarf if you don't want to. It could have tassels, it could be a scarf, you could make this, this same pattern into a blanket. I include not only a row and stitch counter in this pattern, which I've had some great feedback from you guys saying that the, you really, really like that. So I'm gonna hopefully include that in all my patterns going forward is a row and stitch counter. Um, and also the filet crochet chart is included in this. So you could take that chart repeat and make anything out of it. Um, but I've included instructions in the pattern on how to make this specifically. And I'm really excited about it. <laughs> it's called the Pine Forest Cowl. You can make this out of one ball of buttercream mohair brushed, which usually retails for $9.99 at Joann's, at least at my Joann's, but of course I used a coupon that was 50% off, so this scarf cost me $5. <laughs> and I had some left, so if you crochet loosely, <laughs> like I do not, you should still be able to get this entire project out of this one ball of yarn without going up. This yarn says that it is a number two sport weight yarn. That is a complete lie. <laughs> I think it's just like a slightly heavy fingering because you're getting about 200 yards per 50 grams. And, oh, I got like a fuzzy up my nose. So it's, it's basically a fingering weight yarn. You could make this in fingering or sport weight, I think with no issues at all. And I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> Look for this pattern to be coming soon. I'm hoping to get it out to testers this weekend. It is one of my projects, even though it will be without photos. because so I would like to take some like Christmassy style or at least like near a pine tree <laughs> photos of this project and of course it's still really hot and there's no Christmas trees anywhere in Florida what are you gonna do so the photos are gonna have to wait probably until around Thanksgiving <laughs> but that's okay so that was my last finished object that's the pine forest cowl and that will be coming out soon and if you would like to be a tester for my crochet patterns all you have to do is go into my Ravelry group and there is a pattern testers thread you have to answer a few questions. Um, I haven't like responded to people's comments in that thread, but if you comment, then I will e I will send you a Ravelry message and get your email address. And how I do it is when I have a pattern ready for testing, I will send an email out to everyone. And the first people that respond that they're available and can meet the deadline, they get the pattern. And then they have to provide me notes, etc. So if you wanna be a pattern tester, just go to the thread and put all your information in. Um, you do need to be like an experienced crocheter. <laughs> Hopefully you know what you're doing. Like you have not only just made a washcloth or something like that. You have to know how to read patterns. That's all my finished objects. I have four <laughs> works in progress still to talk about. I am going to show you very quickly. Um, I'm still working on my knitted hats. I'm working on my third one. This is a cute little Halloween pin that a lady at church gifted to me. So sweet. I'm using Deborah Norville Everyday, Everyday Yarn. I believe this is Charcoal Heather. I just finished the ribbing for this hat. I got four inches of ribbing. Now I'm gonna do stockinette in the round until I get to about nine and three quarter inches and then I will do the decreases following the Pearl Soho Classic Cuffed Hat pattern, which is completely free online. I did order a 16 inch circular. This is on a four and a half millimeter. So US size seven knitting needle. And the reason that I did is because I was doing them, I have a set of Chowgu Red Lace interchangeables that are five inch tips. So it was very, diff I've knit four hats on this, but it's very difficult to knit a hat like this because you're fighting with it because it's five inches, it doesn't make a circle. This is actually, comes out to be 18 and a half inches total cord length. So this is already two and a half inches shorter and the tips are shorter. So look at that. The tips are much shorter. So it took a little bit of getting used to actually because I'm used to having a, like a lot of knitting needle to hold on to. So it took a little bit of getting used to to use the smaller one, but I really like it. I have, <laughs> I really like my five inch tips, but it's not good for making hats. The second work in progress, I have put just a tiny bit of work into because I'm finally ready to face it. <laughs> after it entirely got pulled out a few months back. And it is 
the crimson hooded cabled cardigan, which is by Sheba Guys, Shannon Mullet Bullsby, and I can't remember his husband's name. Maybe it's in here. It just says Shannon Mullet Bowlesby, but it's um, Sheba Guys, they're a team. And they wrote the Complete Crochet Course book. So this is Valley Yarns Haydenville. It's 100%, no, I think it's 60% Superwash Merino, 40% acrylic. And you get 100, 100 grams, 220 yards. This is worsted weight. I have a ton of this. This is what they designed the pattern is. And, and I got through two and a half balls, as you will remember if you've been around for a little while. And I decided that I was making the wrong size and I wasn't gonna like it. So I pulled out all of the work and I have not been able to face it since then and that was months ago. So now that I've completed so many sweaters, <laughs> the cardigan from last week, the blurred line sweater that I just showed you, I was looking at it and I was like, you know what? I think it's time. And maybe I can get this completed by Christmas. I don't know. This is the back. So I'm like, what? eight rows in. <laughs> That's how much I've started. And then I also started um, one of the front panels. So this is just started the cable motif. So I don't know. I'm really, really not far at all. But I am no longer mad at this project. You know, as the Knit More Girls say, in fashion, sometimes you're in and sometimes you're out. And right now, you're out. Halita Satan. But I think I am ready for this to be in again. And hopefully I will have a little bit of progress. This is my next sweater project that I will be dedicating some time to. I was going to start the add along right away, but then I looked at that and I was like, you know what? This has been, <laughs> it has been started for months and I would really like to make some progress. So, I mean, I barely touched that. I spent maybe an hour on it, but it's slow going. I, I have to really concentrate on the cable part because it requires a lot of brain power. I have two more, and they're both designs, and I'm so excited about both of them. <laughs> Is this the episode where I just say, I'm so excited every five seconds? Because that's what it feels like. Okay, so, my first design is living in this amazing project bag, which is by Rebecca from Tree Frog Yarn. I love this bag so much. It's so sturdy, the canvas is great, and I have, of course, a crochet Luna button on here that says happiness is crochet, because it is, obviously. I have a notebook <laughs> in here so I can keep track of what I am doing. This is yarn that I picked up at Sin City Knits in Vegas when I was there specifically to make this pattern. I have had this design, this shape, this exact pattern in my head for months now, um, and I knew what yarn, what colors I wanted to use, and now I am ready to start it. I don't have a name for this pattern yet. These are the two yarns. It is Barocco Vintage DK. Let's see. The gray is the colorway charcoal. I'm really on like a gray blue kick right now. I don't know why. And then this color is Yukon Green. Um, and I have not used this color yet. This will be at the very bottom. So I am making a triangle shawl. I am through one and a tiny bit of the skeins. And you're not gonna be able to see it very well because <laughs> it's gray. Oh yeah, there you go. This is what it's gonna look like. So what we have is a simple pattern and then we have ribbing. And if you can see, the ribbing is only on one side. This is smooth on the back side. So if you ever have a day where you do not want ribbing, you can just turn this over. But this pattern, this image, this is what's been in my head for months now. So I'm really glad to be able to start this. And it's very simple. This is gonna be a super easy pattern. Um, you can make it, because it is a triangle shawl, you can make it as big as you want. I am going to make it so many repeats. You can keep going if you want. You can make a shalinket out of it. Um, and the reason I want it to be solid fabric, like I'm not doing any kind of lace patterning. This is all very solid stitches. You're, the only way it's going to be lacy is if you block the heck out of this. And this is wool. I want it to be a very cozy, solid, giant triangle scarf to wrap up in in like January. So I'm hoping to get this pattern out in January. I don't know. I have so many things on the go right now. Uh, but this has been my mindless happy crochet over the past few weeks because I don't have to think about it 
Like even throughout the ribbing, it's such a simple pattern, you don't have to think about it. So I'm really, really happy with this. Um, I did order another ball of the gray because I am 100% sure I'm going to run out, <laughs> but that's okay. So that's design number one work in progress. And then design number two work in progress, which will be coming out sooner than that, is living in this, <laughs> this is supposed to be a purse. This was sent to me by Chris, who is a viewer of this podcast, and I love this so much. It says, no problema. And in here, I have a notebook, so I can write down what I'm doing. This is the yarn that I bought at This Is Knit in Dublin. It is Malabrigo. The colorway is Anniversario. It is Malabrigo Arroyo, 100% Superwash Merino, 335 yards for 100 grams. So that makes it a DK weight, I think. If I could only crochet with one yarn for the rest of my life, or like one brand, Malabrigo, 100%. Every time I see their yarn, it gets me. Like, I love their yarn so much. It's my favorite thing. Mm, look at this. I am so happy, so happy. I knew this was going to be a hat pattern, and it is. It was actually larger than this last night, but I had to rip out some rows because I lost count and I was clearly too tired to be working on a design. So this will be a beanie. This is going to be called the November Sky Beanie. And as you can see, it's got ribbing at the bottom. So it's worked from the bottom up. So you could adjust it to be any size if you wanted to. And then we have some plain stitches and then you can get it to focus. We have texture right here. Find another one. You can see that a little bit better. So there's one, two, three, and it repeats all the way around. You would be able to see the texture a little bit better in a solid color yarn, <laughs> but this yarn is so amazing. I can't, I can't wait to wear this hat. So I'm about four, hmm, four and a half inches. Well, I don't know because I measured it before I ripped some out. So I don't, I don't really know how far I am, but I think. I'm trying to decide now if I want it to go to here and then decrease and be slouchy or if I just want it to fit. I'm thinking I want it to be slouchy because this yarn is so amazing. I want to use more of it. This is my, it's not a very big gauge swatch, but I knew what I wanted to do already. So it's not pooling. I think it's working up perfectly. I adore this yarn and then on here, it's this cute little purse stitch marker from Stitching Fairy Crafts on Etsy. I love it, I love it, I love it. So um, maybe I will get a little bit of work done on this this weekend. I don't know. This is my, uh, this is a priority because it's called November Sky. <laughs> so I need to be able to release it hopefully in November. But you know what? We need to stop putting so much pressure on ourselves. So we'll see. I had to rip some rows out because I can't count. <laughs> and I kept missing a stitch and being like, how do I not have the right amount of stitches? Obviously, I needed to go to bed. That is all of the things I have been working on. I know that is a ton of things. Um, I wanna show you quickly, I have been doing some sewing. I have made seven, I finished seven project bags. Now these have been cut out for months, months and piece, they had the inside and the outside were pieced together, but they weren't, the inside and the outside weren't put together, <laughs> if that makes sense. So the lining and the outside were complete, but they weren't attached to each other. And they have been waiting for me to have some time to sit down and decide that done is better than perfect and it's okay to have a dodgy bag and it doesn't have to be perfect because I started one of these and like ripped it apart three times because I just wasn't happy. Um, so some of the stock top stitching is a little bit wonky. Who cares? It's a dodgy bag. I made it. I'm proud of it. Um, the, I'm going to show you five because two of the seven have already left my house <laughs> through the mail. They were gifts for somebody else. So two of these are prizes for the nerd along. We have a Star Wars bag, which has a red lining, plain red. Uh, these are ribbon drawstrings that I've melted the ends in so these hopefully won't fray at all and you just cinch it up. This is a little bit bigger than a sock bag. I would say this is like a medium-sized project bag. You could fit two skeins of yarn and a shawl in here with no problem. 
So I have this Star Wars bag. I have this one, <laughs> which can any of you tell why this is a dodgy bag? It's upside down. Look where the drawstring is in the bottom of the bag. And all the words are upside down. It's got a red lining too. There's no way I could have fixed this when I sat down because everything was already sewn together <laughs> and the drawstring casing was cut out, etc. So I apologize <laughs> that this bag is upside down, but hopefully you will still like it if you win it in the Nerd Along because it was made with love. So those are two prizes for the Nerd Along. I also made this cute little llama bag. This is actually fleece and it has pink plaid on the inside. Um, the front of it looks great. Uh, what happened here? Look at this. <laughs> it's like a wave. It doesn't matter. This is a super cute sock bag. Uh, it will be for something on this podcast. Then I have this one. I have two of these, actually. They're the same. Um, and it's pink on the inside, too. So it's like little bird houses and birds. So cute. So you can see why this is dodgy. I don't know what happened here. I don't know. Maybe you can't see. But there's like a wrinkle. <laughs> why is there a wrinkle? It's fine. It's fine. Also, I took all of the charms that I bought while I was in the UK and I made them into stitch markers. So here they are. Oh, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. Here is my head wig that I got at the Harry Potter store. I have five of these little, no, I have four of these little tiny Scottish sheep. And then I also have a little bar that says Scotland, which you probably can't read. So these are all the ones from London and Scotland. And then I took all the ones that I got from Ireland as well. There are three of these big Irish sheep. There are two little tags that say Ireland. And then there are three crazy sheep. <laughs> I made these all last night. I took them off their keychain and I made them into stitch markers. And I'm really, really happy about that. Okay, I have a couple of acquisitions to show you and then I'm gonna talk about there's a giveaway for this podcast as well. So let's see here. Yeah. The first thing is, if you remember, I talked on the last podcast about that I got six balls of the Stylecraft Special DK in the colorway Atlantis and I was concerned that I wouldn't have enough to make an entire sweater. A lovely, lovely viewer of this podcast who lived in the UK said she had a ball and she sent this to me. And I'm so thankful, thank you so much. I don't know what I'm gonna make, what pattern I'm gonna make, but now I'm just like so relieved <laughs> that I won't run out of yarn. I thought about using this for the add along, but I don't know, I don't know. I'm thinking about holding wool like double. I'm thinking about using this for something else. As you know, I love making sweaters, so it'll definitely be used for that. Thank you. The next thing is I have ordered, I made an order from two Etsy shops, which if you've bought my patterns, you have enabled me to support these lovely makers who are, I consider them my friends and I want to support them. Um, but there's a lot of things up in the air in my life right now. <laughs> and of course, money is always tight. So without your support, I would not have been able to support these people who I love. So the first order that I made was from the Dainty by Crochet Cakes. It's upside down, but look at this cute packaging. <laughs> she has Claire's Beth. She has the Crochet Cakes podcast on YouTube, and she has a beautiful Etsy shop that I will link to down below. And I, when I got back from the UK, I was way, way, way behind on podcasts. So I just went through like I watch a ton of podcasts. So there's a few that are like my friends, and I watch them as soon as possible and I comment on them. And then there's all the other podcasts, um, usually like the bigger name podcasts that I don't necessarily comment on, I just kind of watch them. So, but I was behind, I was like a week late. And so I watched her podcast and she showed this amazing Halloween bag, amazing. And I was like, oh man, I'm positive this is not gonna be in her Etsy shop. Someone has got to have bought this already. But I went over and looked anyways, and I'm so glad I did because it was still there. And so I snagged it immediately. You can see it's got Halloween all over it and on the inside. So it's like a tote bag actually. On the inside it is 
has this cute, cute tag, and it's black and gold polka dots. And then, I don't know how you're gonna be able to see this, but it's got pockets on the inside as well. So I bought this immediately. This is going to live in here as soon as <laughs> this podcast is over. I have been hoarding this bag like just every day, pulling it out and being like, I just wanna use it, but I have to show it on the podcast. So it is so well made. It's like interfaced, it's squishy. I love it. I love it. And look, I really love how symmetrical this is. This is like my favorite part. So Claire's Beth, you're wonderful. This is the most amazing thing. She also sent me the cutest crochet hook holder. So you put your crochet hooks in here and then you tuck them under so that they won't stab anybody. And then you just roll it up and tie it. And your hooks will stay safe. She has these in her shop, so you should go check it out. I'm gonna put a link to her shop down below. That's not all she sent though. She sent you guys a prize for the nerd along. And this is the coolest thing. This is a Star Wars bag based on Solo, the latest Star Wars movie that came out, which I don't know why I got so much hate. I freaking loved that movie. Loved it so much, it was so fun. Um, it says punch it. She also embroidered these, so these are hand embroidered. She has a beautiful tag on the back. And then look at the inside. I'm gonna turn it inside out so you can see. It's Star Wars fabric with the Millennium Falcon. Oh, this is the most amazing bag. It's so cool. So this is going to be a prize for the nerd along. That's what she sent it for. It's perfect. It will go with, well, it won't go with. Different people will win these. But now I have three Star Wars project bags and I adore Star Wars. In case you don't know, I have Darth Nihilus tattooed on my leg. If you don't know who Darth Nihilus is, it's because he's not in any of the movies. He's in Knights of the Old Republic, which is a video game about Star Wars. So, nerd alert. So thank you, thank you so much, Elizabeth. If you win this, you're gonna be like the luckiest person in the world. One more acquisition to show you. One piece of happy yarn mail is also my dear friend, Claudia of the Crochet Luna Podcast. As I've already mentioned, she has all kinds of buttons and fun things. And I have been wanting to place an order for her buttons for a little bit of time now, but I wanted to wait until she put some more project bags up in her shop because I knew there would be one that I loved. And she had some Halloween project bags too. And originally I was gonna buy one of those. However, she put this one up and it's so bright and so cheerful and so me. <laughs> it's lime green and pink and it's all about sewing and it's got this giant interface handle, which I love. And it is lime green on the inside. And it has, look, this is the coolest part. This is a space for your crochet hook. So if you wanna put your hook in and then you won't lose it in the bottom of your bag, you can have a little pocket for that. And look at this cute little mouse zipper pull. So you could use it as a stitch marker because it comes right off, but I think I'm gonna leave it on there. <laughs> and it'll be my zipper pull on this bag. So I was really, really happy to get that in the mail. And then I also ordered her pin. Hopefully you can see that. It says crochet friends are the best friends. This is an enamel pin. I have all of her enamel pins. I was missing this one. So obviously that can't happen. I had to buy it. And then I had to buy this. <laughs> the minute she put this up, I was like, oh my gosh, I need this so bad. It says, nobody puts crochet in a corner. This pen is going on this bag immediately. And then I got a pen that says fall crochet, yay. I got this for you guys because it's gonna go with this bag because it's fall, it's a November, almost, <laughs> it's Halloween. And it also comes with like a tea and a cute little Werther's candy. So these, these two items are going to be a giveaway for this podcast. So I made the bag, I got this button from Claudia and I'll put a link to her shop down below so you can check it out. So all you need to do to enter this giveaway, this is going to be a YouTube giveaway, is comment down below and tell me Hmm, what should I have you tell me? Tell me what your favorite thing is about fall. Is it pumpkin spice? 
Is it the leaves changing? We don't get that in Florida. We do get pumpkin spice lattes. <laughs> is it that Christmas is coming and you skipped Thanksgiving altogether? Because I'm totally a fan of that. If that's you, cool. Is your favorite thing about fall Halloween? Like, tell me what your favorite thing about fall is. And I will use a comment generator to pick someone by the next podcast to win this. Now, it is hard for me to get a hold of people on YouTube because I don't have like your email or anything like that. So if we do a YouTube giveaway, if you enter this giveaway, please come back <laughs> next podcast and see if you have won. I will also comment below your comment when I draw this and I will say, you won, please send me an email with your address. Um, if you don't send me an email, so I'll draw this by next podcast, which will be two weeks. If you don't send me an email by the following two weeks, then I'm gonna have to pick another winner. Um, that's why it's, that's why we don't do, a lot of podcasters do giveaways on Ravelry <laughs> instead of on YouTube because it's hard to get people to see that they've won. So you, if you enter this, please come back in two weeks and see if you've won this giveaway. And I'll comment below your name on YouTube as well and say that you've won. So tell me what your favorite thing is about fall. Leave me a comment below. If you would like to win a copy of the Blurred Lines Sweater Pattern by Deanna Vatty Day Designs, go to the Ravelry thread and tell me about your crochet sweater life. There will be a prompt. Please only enter that one if you're serious <laughs> about making that sweater because I really want to give it to someone who wants that pattern. And keep an eye out because on Wednesday, just a couple of days, Bellatrix will be released and then you can make it. And I will say, if you have made any of my patterns, please, please, please do make a Ravelry page for them. There's nothing you can do that helps more than to put a Ravelry page so that other people can see your beautiful creations and they don't just look at the pattern and they're like, mm, nobody made that, boo. <laughs> so please do make a Ravelry page. I will love you forever if you do that. Uh, I have been rambling on for forever. I'm not, I don't even think I'm gonna do a life update in this podcast, I had so much crochet. So. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you liked this episode, do give it a thumbs up. That helps YouTube to know <laughs> that I am putting out content that it, you like. If you have not already, hit the subscribe button down below. Oh, I forgot to say, if you wanna enter this giveaway, you must be a subscriber to the channel. So if you're new, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. Hit the subscribe button <laughs> before you enter the giveaway. And um, I will be back in two weeks with more crafty goodness. Probably not this much crafty goodness next time, but We'll see, maybe, who knows? Maybe I'll have all the time in the world to crochet. So until I see you next time, happy crafting. I hope you have the best two weeks. I hope you have a happy Halloween and I will see you in a couple of days for an announcement video. Bye!